Hello and welcome to our midweek episode where we're going to talk about the Toronto Maple Leafs and their prospect pool. We've done previous episodes of both the Montreal Canadiens and Ottawa Senators. Now we're going to be touching base on the Toronto Maple Leafs. So using the same, similar, actually the same website that we used for the, the previous ones where they've ranked the NHL prospect pools, Toronto Maple Leafs have come in on at 17th. Uh, they were in 15th. Last year, and now they're in 17th. Now, Which, honestly, I can see. Yeah. I'm going to be completely honest with you. I recognize one name. Before really doing an in-depth look, I only recognize one name, and that's Nick Robertson. Yes. Nick Robertson, I believe, is going to be a top six uh, forward. And apart from that, I think they have a lot of, like, middle to bottom six grinders. I don't... I think Toronto does not have a single superstar uh, prospect or, like, star prospect. They have good... A good prospect in Robertson, but I think that's it. And like that's like the nice way of putting it. However, Toronto's been buyers of the deadline for the last two to three years, so I'm not surprised that their prospect pool is diminished. Because, you know, they just trade them all away. Just to try to get past the first round of the playoffs. <laughs> Psych. <laughs> right, but Nick Robertson is the most well-known name. Definitely top prospect of that team he's currently on the Toronto Marlies thankfully he's not up with the big team because I think he still needs a lot of time to develop he's he's not he's like a 0.7 point per game player 0. 0.65 0. 0.7 around there so not huge in the AHL in the AHL yeah. yeah so that would like probably go around like 35 to 40 points in a season so that's like a middle six forward yeah I think he's bad. but he's their best prospect though in a strictly offensive standpoint like and then they also have like so I'll give you the names of their top five at least and then there's this I have a, I found another article on the uh, again hockey writers that list their top ten with positions so we can probably talk about that a little bit here but okay. like looking at like Ro, Rodion Amirov is like a, is is showing to be a really good, is like a two way winger um, Roni Hirvonen. You know, like a small guy, like a little great, like a kind of like a Yamamoto kind of type player. I don't think he'll be as good as Yamamoto, but a Yamamoto type player. And then uh, defenseman, uh, who was the, the best defenseman in the most recent uh, World Juniors, Topi Niemela. He should be quite, he should be like a decent prospect. I, I don't see him being a top pairing guy in the NHL level. I do see him like, may, like definitely third pairing or maybe second pairing i don't see I, I you know what second pairing i see a mm-hmm. decent second as long as it like develops properly right? yeah but yeah i mean so is there anything you want to add right now like i'm looking at the top 10 list that i'll, I'll be naming off real quick here but uh no not really like you said like it's like out of like all the canadian teams they have like one of the weaker like pools mm-hmm. for prospects but it, that doesn't mean like they can they will be bad. Like it, they might turn it turn it around and just become really good. And then with development and and everything, they might turn out to be actually really really good players. But mm-hmm. like for right now, yeah, I agree that they're they're not as strong, but they're still very young. But so it doesn't doesn't mean that they're going to be bad all, like for throughout their whole career. But mm-hmm. not as yeah, not as I good just for don't now. think they're as they're as good as other ones but they have de- you know what they don't have though they don't have a good goalie in their system like at all like they don't have anybody projected to be they have two good defensemen so let's start with the top yeah their top prospect nick robertson he was in the bubble uh, for the playoffs scored a goal in the bubble uh and then he was lighting it up last year had 16 points in the first 21 games uh and now he's yeah, he's not doing well in the AHL right now but like he is a point producing forward that I think he's their top prospect he's uh he's a legit top prospect like I'd put him he'd be one of the better prospects for Edmonton or Calgary yeah. or Ottawa or Montreal like he he's a legit prospect yeah is he elite no no but he's good and then this the uh, hockey writers has Timothy Lilgren as their um as Toronto's second best he's a right shot more offensively minded defenseman Drafted in the first round of 2017. Yeah, again, hit between him and uh, Niemal and whatever his name was, that's that's a legit second pairing. That's a good second or like two guys that could fit in those like more offensively minded roles. 
that's huge. They just, I think they would need to play with like a defensive defenseman to go with them. But yeah. both guys that could like, in the first and second unit power plays, I think. But this is going to be important for the Maple Leafs. Like they need all their, all of their big prospects. I think four of them will be promoted to the NHL team next year. Solely be- yeah, well, because they because have no the salary money. cap. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have the money. So you have to have the entry-level contracts in there. And like the Robertson the fact that he fell to 59th overall, second round, that was huge for them. He's, he's a first-round talent, so that was good that they got him with that pick. And then their most, I don't know if the most recent, but their 2020 first-round pick, I think that's the last first-round pick they had. I don't remember having one last year. But Ryodin Amirov. That's the defensive guy that I was telling you about. Mm-hmm. He's a defensive winger. He'll be a middle six. I, I can see him being a third line checking winger. He's a big dude as well. Like he's, as I think he is. Didn't I see he was six four somewhere? Anyways, they're comparing him to Hosa, which I think is like you know, very yeah, he's six feet. Very biased, but six feet six zero or six four. Six zero. Six zero. Okay, I was wrong. And then Topi Niemala, we already spoke about him, more of an offensive guy. He's on he was on Sweden's power play in the World Juniors. Not a bad pickup, but the third round pick in the sixty fourth overall. It's that's pretty decent, honestly. Uh twenty twenty draft as well. And then Roni Hirvonen. And now this is where it starts to get not very good. You know, like again, not, these are still NHL prospects. They're still going to be decent, but this kid is not going. Like, I do not see him being more than a third line center. And third line centers are very, very valuable and important pieces. But I don't see him. I think that's his ceiling that. at the absolute yeah. most. Yeah, because then you have Nick Abruzzi, fourth round pick out of twenty nineteen. I, yeah, and then just going from there. What I'm seeing here is that they don't have a goalie, so they're going to have... I ideally see them probably looking to draft or trade for a goalie soon and just... But, no, actually, they need to draft a goalie. They need to draft a goalie. And they had a chance at... Honestly, yeah, honestly, I was going to say, like, I would have, like, tried to move up this year, especially with Kosa and Walstead. I would have definitely... Especially being Toronto and not having really good, like... They they were 15th... Wait... No, that was two years ago. Yeah, they should have probably tried to do something they to get up there. Should have just tried to do something. Yeah. Absolutely agree. Even giving up like one of their players to just to try get um, either Kosa or Wallstead because yeah, like we said, like you said, they don't have really good like goalie prospects, and that's definitely going to hurt them in the future for sure. Yeah, it's um. It's not great so no. far, if we're going to be completely honest. It's, it's I mean, they're not going to be terrible by any means. I don't, no. I don't think it's going to be, it's a terrible prospect pool. But, like, yeah, it's so clear that they're missing a goalie there. Like, so clear that they desperately need one in that system. But, that's the thing, not many goalies are traded now. It's very rare that you don't, like, the goalie that you make into the cup is not one that you draft. Very rare. Very rarely. Like, bidding, like well, let's think of the last ones. It's Vasilevsky... Then Bennington, and then uh, Holtby, mm-hmm. and then uh, Jari Murray, Flurry, all of those guys Jari for Pittsburgh. <laughs> yep. Right, but they were all part no, of. I'm oh, sorry, yeah. Murray and Flurry, really, not Jari. Jari didn't win a cup, I don't think. And then, like you have the Crawfords, Niemi. I don't remember the last time a, a goalie was traded and won the cup. Almost. Kate Rowley. <laughs> yeah, but like most teams have their goalies yeah. drafted. Like and they draft Developed goalie. and nurtured yeah. and everything. That's actually really interesting. I don't remember it. Because Crawford was, I don't know, interesting. Yeah, big name goalies don't get traded too often, right? It's very rare. Like the biggest goalie trade we've had in a while is Kemper. Yep. It's either you trade for him or you sign him. But they Toronto doesn't have money to sign anybody. Mm-hmm. So, cool. Anyways. I think that's it for Toronto. Do you have anything to add? No. No? Basically, just, just they have decent forwards. Defense is They have there. good depth pieces. Yeah. They have very good depth good pieces. Depth, but yeah. not... Nothing in your top six. Nothing that will help you like stand out in the future kind of thing. Yeah. And I then agree. goalies are lacking big time. Huge. There, there's nobody in their top ten prospects. And when their tenth prospect is like projected to be like a number seven defenseman... 
Which again, guys, there's this is nothing taken because if you're a number seven defenseman, you're still one of the best players in the world. Yeah. Let's not even kid ourselves. Yeah. A number seven defenseman is still is, is still a very good hockey player. But we're talking about NHL standards are being hypercritical. Um yeah, their prospect pool is not great. This is why they're in win now. This is why Toronto's in win now mode, because their prospect pool isn't that great. And yeah. then, I mean Matthews will will be good for years to come. Marner should be good for years to come and, and we'll see how that goes. But Yeah, but like just quickly looking at like the draft picks, like all they have for this coming year is their first, their second, and their seventh. Like I don't think you're, you're, yeah, you're, you're not, not going to be able anything. to build anything with only getting three players in, in the mm-hmm. draft. Especially like like you said, most likely next year they're going to have to move a lot of their prospects into the main roster just because they don't have the money. Mm-hmm. So only draft like okay, first and second would be fine. Seventh. If you find a diamond in the rough kind of thing, like a needle in the haystack, then you're fine. But like drafting only three players is not going to help for sure. Yeah. No. Exactly. So. All right. That's it for that's it for Toronto. And yeah, tune in for in a later episode. We'll talk about another uh, another Canadian team.